everybody, welcome to DVTV Live for Friday, April the, not April, May the 11th, pardon me, I'm, uh, a month late here, DVTV Live for Friday, May the 11th. I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about what's in the paper for this week, we're not going to be here a full hour today, I'm here by myself, but we're going to talk about what's in the paper, uh, tell you a little bit about everything that's going on this weekend, and uh, things you should be on the lookout for. First and foremost, what I want to say is um, I have, we have Scarborough Fair is still going on. It's going on through Monday, uh, Memorial Day, uh, on Fridays and Saturdays for the next three weekends. And then that Monday, Memorial Day, will be the last day. I have two tickets to Scarborough Fair. And when I'm done with this um, video, when I'm done with this live stream, I'm going to go to our Facebook page. And the first person who says, hey, give me tickets to Scarborough Fair can get two free tickets, okay? Don't forget to do that if you, if you want to try and go to Scarby between now and closing time. So um, let's get down to business, talk a little bit about what's in the paper this week. Um, our cover story, this photo is by David Taffet, and it was at a press conference this week for uh, a young woman named Stacy Bailey, who's a teacher at an uh, elementary school in Mansfield Independent School District. Uh, last fall, uh, I guess right after the kids first came back to school, she showed them a picture of her and her fiance uh, and said, you know, yeah, this is this is my fi fiance, we're gonna be getting married. I'm, I don't know what she told me. She showed them a picture. Some kid went home and said, hey, mom, you know, Miss Bailey showed us a picture of her girlfriend and um, the parents complained. Uh, the school board, the school administrators chose to suspend Miss Bailey, and I think she's her contract was renewed, but she isn't really scheduled to teach. They want to move her away from elementary school kids and put her in high school, and she's like, no, I don't want to do that. I like teaching these kids, and I, I've not done anything wrong, so I shouldn't have to be punished by being moved. Um, this week, she hasn't spoken out, and she's still personally has not spoken out. Her attorney and her wi uh, now wife, then fiance, now wife, spoke at the at the uh, press conference this week uh, and explained the lawsuit. But they, this is Leo, he's leaving. Y'all say it's on this side, they can't see you. I don't think. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Can you not see me? No, I think it's the side of the side of my phone. Oh. Well, this says I'm working. This says it's working. Hang on. There. Let's do this. Oh, uh, wait. Let's try something different. You know, just do a wide angle so we can see everything. How's that, Leo? Better? Yeah. Okay. We're trying to make sure, I'm, I, I'm new to doing this and I'm trying to manage everything from my phone, so I'm looking at you guys, I'm looking at my phone, I'm reading the newspaper, and I'm talking to Leo, I'm a little busy. Usually I have Israel Luna here with me, uh, and he's really good at, at managing all this. He can talk and do this all at the same time. And he's out of town this weekend. Uh, Brandy Amara Sky is my other regular contributor here for DVTV Live. Where Brandy is working on a book, she's trying to taking all her time right now to get it finished. I'm working on a book deal. We're all very excited for that. That's a great thing for Brandy. Um, anyway, back to the story. Stacey Bailey. Um, she's filed a federal lawsuit uh, charging the, the, the school district with discrimination. Uh, there was a... And again, she's not speaking out. She's just staying quiet on the advice of her attorney. Other people are speaking on her behalf, really. And now there's a lawsuit that speaks on her behalf. So we'll be following that as things progress. Um, also this week, there's a couple of other, other important stories to pay attention to. We, unfortunately, Dallas is the site of the murder, the ninth murder of a transgender person this year in the U.S. Since, you know, in 2018 in the United States. Um, I don't really know how many trans people have been murdered worldwide this year. Um, in the United States, we know of, of nine now, nine trans people. And I believe all, if not most, are trans women, and most of them are trans women of color 
who are the biggest targets for this kind of kind of uh, attack. And this young woman who was killed here in Dallas this week, she was a trans woman of color. She was a Latina. Her name was Carla Patricia Flores Pavon. Uh, they found her, I believe it was Wednesday. Let me double check my date. Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday. Um, she was found in her apartment, and she had apparently been choked to death. Um, we have a story in the paper. David wrote this one, too. Put this one together. Um, tells what we know about her death and list the other eight trans people who have been murdered so far. Um, last year there was a, a record number of transgender people killed in the United States. Um, you know, the, the, the circumstances varied. Uh, some, you know, were killed by uh, romantic partners. Some were killed in obvious hate crimes. Some were solved, some were not. There were a couple, I think, who were killed by police. Um, in, in, in confrontations there and you know obviously there's some question about what happened and why in those situations um, but again that happened in Dallas this week on Wednesday she was found and, uh, they, they have a, a, a description of a suspect a, a Latin male that was seen leaving the apartment shortly before her body was discovered um, there is a number, anybody who might have any information, sh please contact the police. We, we want you to call Detective, I'm sorry, let me find his name, Detective Tommy Rayley, R-A-L-E-Y, at 214-283-4856. If you have any information that might help, please contact Detective Tommy Rayley at 214-283-4856. Um, we want to try and find who did this. We want to bring them to justice. Uh, there's another one. There's a lot of a lot of stuff directed at women in the paper this week. Got a lot of anger and and, and problems all centered on women. Done a story here about a, a woman named Tony Torres lives in Louisville, and on April it was Sunday, April 29th. She had been, she lives in an apartment, she'd been at a, another apartment, a friend's apartment there in the complex, spent the day. Her, her girlfriend, Valerie Cangro, lives in St. Louis right now, and they had been talking back and forth for, through video chat during the day, and um, around 10, Tony said, hey, time to go to bed, I'm got to get up and work tomorrow. Her, her neighbor that she was visiting with walked her back to the apartment because she'd been having problems with some other neighbors, a couple who had moved in, I think, last November and had just been giving her hell ever since, uh, yelling insults at her, harassing her verbally, those kinds of things. Uh, from what I was told, you know, they caused problems for other people in the apartment complex. The complex management was getting all kinds of complaints about them and had offered to move her, but she didn't want to move. She, she wanted to be able to wait until her girlfriend got here so they could move one time to a larger ap apartment instead of having to move again and again. But on Sunday, after she got to her apartment, she was in her apartment, and she doesn't have a lot of, of, of memory of what happened. I spoke with her, with Valerie uh, from St. Louis, and the neighbor that walked her home offered some information, and another neighbor that lived upstairs who could hear everything that was going on has, has given a statement about what happened. Um, they said, you know, somebody knocked on the door, and she opened the door, and it's this, these two couple, this man and this woman who have been harassing her, and uh, the woman kind of was taking the lead and pushing her and hitting at her, and she's like, leave me alone, don't hit me, get off my porch, go away, you're trespassing in, in my area here, and um, as it turned out, you'll have to read the whole story here in the paper, but she, or online at DallasVoice.com, but she was um, hit, she was knocked down, the man would put his foot on her leg to hold her down on the ground so she couldn't get up while his girlfriend beat her up, beat Miss Torres up pretty badly. She, you can see the photos, he's covered in blood. Um, so this has been reported to the police. Uh, there's some con concern by uh, Valerie's girlfriend, I mean by Valerie, Tony's girlfriend, and uh, some other folks that the police maybe are not taking this seriously. Um, I spoke with a patrol division captain who's 
I didn't speak with him. He left a message for me after I called, and he suggested there has been a police report was taken. They police responded. There was a report, and there is an ongoing investigation. The uh, uh, the officers, uh, the, the captain, the head of the uh, Crimes Against Persons Division that is handling the investigation has not called me back with any other information. Uh, I'm sure that, like I said, the investigation is ongoing. I'm sure as soon as they have some information, they'll let us know. But we're going to be following up on that case as well. Uh, we have a really interesting piece in this week's paper by David Webb. He used to be a staff writer here. Now he works um, freelance for us. He lives down on Cedar Creek Lake in Kaufman County. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of attention in the in the mainstream media on Stormy Daniels, the uh, adult entertainment actress, um, who has come out and said she, you know, she had a, uh, I think, a one-night stand and sexual relationship with Donald Trump uh, some years ago, right after his son Barron had, was born and the first lady, now first lady Melania was home with the new baby and he was out having a fling with, a, with this woman. And um, she says, and her attorney, Michael Avenatti, they say that they were given, you know, she was paid $130,000 right before the election last year so that she would keep quiet about what happened. They didn't want the bad publicity. It all goes back to Trump's attorney, Michael Cohen, who, who's under investigation for some other problems as well. But um, David discovered that, that Stormy Daniels, that's her, her stage name, her, her uh, film name that she, she acts under. Um, she lives in, in uh, she lives in Kaufman County out in Forney, which is tiny little tiny. It's a town, a small town out in Kaufman, which is kind of southeast of Dallas, Kaufman County. And she lives there with her husband and her daughter and um, you know, David was just really caught off guard by the fact that she lived there. So he started talking to some folks. We we reached out to to Miss Daniels, asking her if she would like to comment. Asked, well, we've invited her to come here and be on DVTV with us, and we're kind of hoping that she will, or maybe her attorney, Michael Avenatti. If you're out there, you're welcome to come and talk to to us, and you're come welcome to come and sit on the couch with us on a Friday for DVTV. But um, you know, kind of. The LGBT angle is in, in the earlier years of her uh, adult movie career, Stormy Daniels did some lesbian porn. I think David was a little surprised by that. Uh, I don't think it's really that unusual. I think a lot of adult entertainment has women who are in their personal life are not LGBT, but you know they do it do it for the movie and for the money, which that's perfectly fine. It's a <laughs> it's legal. And it's their profession, and I'm sure they're very professional about it. Um, but David has a piece on that. It's kind of a it's a rare reporter kind of column on that. I, I think check it out. It's, it's pretty interesting. He talked to um, a woman who works in the adult entertainment industry who kind of dispelled some myths about what the life of a porn star might be like. Uh, James Russell, also a former staff writer who now works freelance kind of has done a, a roundup of some of the elections around the state, municipal elections, elections around the state this past week. Um, we were sad to learn that Jess Herbst, who was um, mayor of New Hope, which is a, a, a little a small town in the suburbs north of Dallas, um, trans woman, w was running for re-election. She... Um, the mayor died in 2016, and uh, Jess was not out as a trans person and, and served as, a, as an alderman and on some boards and was appointed as mayor, came out after being appointed, came out as trans, um, and has gotten a lot of attention. But she was running for re-election, and unfortunately she did not win. That's a, we were sad to see that happen. But there were a lot of uh, good things that happened in elections around the, around the state. Um, one of them, down in Del Rio's, down South Texas, uh, a man named Bruno, oh my gosh, Bruno Lozano, Bruno Lozano, pardon me for that, uh, was elected as 
uh, mayor of that town. And I think, I think I heard somebody say the population is about 40,000. So it's not a tiny little town. So um, a lot of the press that I've seen on it, it's a gay man who likes to wear high heels. And I've heard some people say that he's a drag queen. I don't know about that. I, he's a very handsome man from the photos. But he was elected the openly gay man, a mili military veteran, was um, elected mayor of Del Rio. One thing that I want to point out, and I hope everybody will take the time this week to read in the paper, in our Community Voices section this week, we have a letter from uh, Leo, who's standing over there right now. Um, he's owner of the uh, Dallas Voice and Voice Publishing. Uh, say hi, Leo. Hey, gang. This is Leo. He owns the Dallas Voice and is a publisher, president, publisher, all those things. But he wrote a letter to talk about the fact that this issue of Dallas Voice is Volume 35, Issue 1. That means that we are beginning our 35th year. We just completed our 34th year with last week's issue. Right now, this issue begins our 35th year. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of things planned over the next year. We're going to be celebrating in May 2019. We're going to have a big celebration to mark right. 35 years. Yeah, a big it, birthday party. It, it was interesting earlier this year. I was I was thinking, oh, this is our 35th anniversary issue of Dallas Voice. It's going to be a big um, issue on on March on May 11th, uh, 2018. But somebody had to correct me that you don't celebrate your first and first birthday on the day you're born. You you celebrate that the year <laughs> after the year you after complete yeah. the first birthday. So we'll be celebrating um, that next year. Um, a year from today. Uh, a year from today for the 35th anniversary issue of Dallas Voice. But I think it's still a milestone to to, to start this year um, where we're at today, which is very different than we were in. 1984 when we started uh, Dallas Voice, when, when somebody started Dallas Voice. It yes. wasn't Tammy and I, but... Well, I, we um, were not far behind, honestly. Right, exactly. No, I was, we started in... The newspaper was founded in 84. I came on in 88. I came on in 92. So, so not yeah. that long. Yeah. Uh, we've been here a long time, but yeah. I think... Didn't David Taffet look and our very first issue came out on May 11th? 1984? I think you yeah, said it was May 11th. Date. So it's this yeah. day. This day. It's usually not May 11th, but... You know, it, it changes every year, obviously. Well, we whatever that, Friday, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we're, we're excited about that. Read Leo's letter. It's, uh, it talks about where we've been and where we're going. So, um, and then, of course, we've got Arnold Jones's lifestyle section. We've got a lot of stuff. He's done an interview with Daisy Egan, who's on stage this right now in The Humans at... That's going to be a good show. Um, I've read some stuff about it, and it's so funny that, you know, you have to see it. It's at the Winspear, right? It Winspear is. Opera House, yeah. Uh, Sarah McBride, uh, trans lady who's worked uh, activist, trans lady activist who works with HRC still. She's mm -hmm. written a book. Okay. Uh, we have uh, the Audi A5, a review of that by our Casey Williams. An interview with Rachel Wise on her new lesbian movie called Disobedience. Uh, and of course, Monday, this coming Monday is Mother's Day, May 13th. Is it Monday or Sunday? Sunday. Did I Sunday. say Monday? Yeah, Sorry, Sunday. Monday. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows. I said it again. <laughs> Everybody knows Mother's Day is on Sunday. So this Sunday, May the 13th, is Mother's Day. And Arnold has some suggestions about where you can take Mom to go to a really nice brunch and enjoy the day. So we've got a lot of stuff there. Um, we also, uh, as I say every week, we have three different calendar sections for Dallas Voice. The Gay Agenda is is focused on community events, um, fundraising type of things, po political groups, support groups. Then we have the Arts and Entertainment calendar that's in the back part of the paper, uh, where you'll find things about what movies are out, what what's on th on what stage, plays are out, what what concerts are coming in. Yeah, um, yeah. Art exhibits, what's going on to museums. That's in the Arts and Entertainment calendar. Go all the way to the back for the scene section. Mm -hmm. You can read Cassie Nova's advice column this week. Um, she's here every in the paper every other week. We also have Jenny Block and uh, Harold. Ask Harold, yep. which is um, how to do the wrong thing right. Also in the scene section, you can see what's happening at all the bars. We look at um, we comb that stuff and and bring that stuff to you guys to know what's happening. Um, what's new? What's next? What's trending out on the street? Um, 
uh, in, the, in the gay community and the gay bars. And the scene section has that information. It also has a lot of, of photos about from the bars and from other events that have been going on. So you can go there, and if you've been out and about on the, on the, in the neighborhood or at an event, go to scene and look for your picture. You might Did be you there. Did you say out in, in other things around the world? Yes, and this week we have oh, a photo out spread world. from yes. my friend Christy Pitchford. She was in Japan. And it just so happens to be that it was their Gay Pride Week, and they had a parade, and she took some pictures and sent them to us, and we put them in the in the scene section. So it's a it's a global publication here in Oxford. <laughs> yes, we've yeah. got we've got a lot of things going on. Stephen just walked in. Hi everyone! <laughs> Happy Friday! <laughs> and um, Stephen is our social media person manager here, and he's he's quite good in it. And if you need somebody to help you navigate your Facebook or your Twitter or Instagram or right. whatever it is, you call, call Stephen. He'll help you out with that. Um, before you go, I, you got a camping trip yeah. here with the kiddos in a bit. Uh, before you go, we have a national pride issue coming up. And so we want people to be aware of that. If you are looking for a good issue to, to advertise in, perhaps, That'll be a good one. Yeah, the National Pride is usually the third, um, second or third biggest issue of the year for us here at Dallas Voice, and it's what it's how we celebrate National Pride here locally is by really um, identifying what's happening around um, DFW and Texas and around the country in that one issue and look at spotlighting what's going on. So it's a lot of great information um, and a great opportunity to reach a very loyal demographic, and that's what you do when you advertise with us in Dallas Voice, is reaching a very loyal demographic. And, you know, you know, people look around um, the community today, and with us in gay media, print is still king. And so, you know, and I think the reason that is, is because for the community, we like to use companies that we know will treat us fairly. And, um, and to get that information, you have to pick up the paper and you have to read and you have to see who's advertising with us as well. And that's, that's, that's one reason why I think as a company, um, as a media company, we're doing well, looking at hopefully increasing our circulation this year, which is d very different for a media company today to, to talk about. Um, our national advertising is up 19% this year as well. So from a company that's standpoint, good. we're doing well. And um, I'm, I'm really proud of what we do around here every week. And, we understand what our mission is, which is to provide a voice for the LGBT community here in North Texas. Yeah, and, and we, like we said, we are starting our 35th year. We are kind of planning, you know, we want this to be a very special year. We want to build up to a great celebration next May when we, when we get our 35th, when we complete that 35th year. So there's a lot of things that we have going on that we are building and improving, um, and just growing in a lot of different ways. Uh, and one of those ways is our DBTV um, stuff that we do. We, exactly. we have new branding for DBTV. You've seen it in the un opening intro. And one of the things that we do with DBTV, we have DBTV Live, which is what this is today. And we also have DBTV News, which we do breaking news. And it's a smaller segment that we do to tell you what's happening in the community that you need to know about right then and there. And then finally, we have DBTV on the scene, which is our, our crew, Brandy and um, Brad, that go out um, with Israel and Brian to really capture mm -hmm. the moment at um, a lot of these uh, uh, events in the community. Yeah, I mean, it's like this this uh, Saturday night, we have DIFFA. Mm -hmm. We have DIFFA collection going on, and a lot of us who can't make it to DIFFA. So we're going to send DBTV. Brad, Pritch Brad Pritchett and Brian Kennedy will be there, and they'll be... Next week, you'll find a, a DVTV on the scene segment from DIFA. We have Texas Bear Roundup is coming up. I think we're going to do DVTV, yep. a DVTV segment there. Uh, there's a uh, one of the pageants, a big pageants coming up. Brandy's going to be there doing that. Yep, and also the, um, uh, the AIN has their blooming ball coming up. We have a DVTV crew that will be there shooting that as well. So yeah, we're you know one of the things that will we're experiencing with Dallas Voice is, you know, that, that different delivery of news from different sources. Absolutely. And one of the things that we're expanding on um, in 25th, 20, you know, our 35th year is video and getting this our crew out there to, to kind of show you mm -hmm. behind the scenes and what's happening at these events in the community um, with, um, with that, that talented crew that we have with Brad and Brandy. Yeah, and our great video producers, That's right. too, Brian and Israel. 
Uh, yeah, and also in June we're going to have uh, we we plan to have somebody at Queer Bomb, and I think that's a as that is Dallas's local pride event for June. You know, most of our pride, our parade, and our music festival are all in September, um, but we do have a group of folks who every year do Queer Bomb as a National Pride Month celebration for Dallas. Um, I can't remember exactly where it's taking place. They raise money for this. You can find them on Facebook. You can help them pay. They don't. They don't have a lot of sponsors. They just raise all the money themselves. Right. So you can help with that. And whether you can be there, even if you're there, you might not see what's going on over here. You might not get to talk to everybody. And our DVTV crew will be there to help you. Yep. Bring that. Okay. Relive all that. So we're gonna let Thank Leo. You, Sammy. Thank you, Leo. We're gonna let him go so he can take his kiddos camping. He's a good dad that way. So, um, let me just go over real quick before we wrap up for the day. Let's talk a little bit about the agenda, what's going on this weekend. One of the big things this weekend is Purple Party. Uh, it starts tonight, uh, May 11th. It starts tonight at uh, with the Pump Party from 5 to 9 p.m. at Aloft, Dallas downtown. Tomorrow night... Oh, Ignite is also tonight. Pardon me. Ignite is tonight at S4 on Cedar Springs from 9 to nine p.m. to 4 a.m. And the Purple Party's main event is Saturday with DJ's Rosa Bell at the Southside Ballroom. There's also a, a pool party, a purple pool party on Saturday afternoon, but I uh, didn't list that in the agenda because it's already sold out. And one of the reasons Purple Party is important is because it is a fundraiser for nonprofit organizations in the community. Um, also tonight at uh, Dallas Eagle, the United Court of the Lone Star Empire and the Central Texas Empire will be holding an event called Not Your Grandpa's Underwear Auction. And that is going to benefit the, uh, the, the beneficiaries already designated for those two organizations. Um, tomorrow, as I said, House of Diffa, Alter Ego, the show, Fast... Fashion Design and Philanthropy at a um, creative black tie event. Uh, there will be probably, an I think, an auction, silent auction, raffle prizes. There will be a runway sh show, high-end high, high -end runway show. You don't want to miss that. Also, on Saturday, Gray Pride Prom, 7 to 11 p.m. at Resource Center for um, LGBT people ages 50 and older. An evening with Chad Mc Ch Log Cabin Republicans of Dallas present Chadwick Moore, former Out Magazine and Advocate Editor. Uh, this is at, at a private residence tomorrow. You can check lcrdallas.org for that. Um, Gray Pride on the 12th on uh, Sunday uh, Saturday presents performance by Flexible Gray. It's uh, monologues based on um, questions and answers that people asked older LGBT people. Uh, again, Mother's Day, the, the Women's Chorus performs at Texas Dis Discovery Gardens on, on uh, Sunday for Mother's Day. Early voting in the local municipal elections. No, not the municipal elections, I am sorry. Early voting for the May 22nd runoff starts on Monday. Tarrant County Stonewall Democrats meet Monday at One Safe Place on Hempel Street. Um, grief, support, grief support group on Monday for LGBT people who have lost a spouse or partner. You can tour the Health Campus for Resource Center on Tuesday from 5.30 to 7. In the 17th, next Thursday, is the HRC Federal Club Happy Hour. Also that night, you can meet gubernatorial candidate and former Dallas County Sheriff Lupe Valdez at Resource Center from 5.30 to 7. Uh, Gala, Gay and, Lesbian, Gay and Lesbian Alliance of North Texas, Gala North Texas, has its third Thursday happy hour on Thursday, 5.30 to 8, at Bonnie Ruth Bistro, Bistro in Allen. Red Foundation presents the Red Dragon, the Forbidden City Party, next Friday night, 8 to 11 p.m. at the Empire Room. Again, this is a party for a cause. These folks 
stage a big fun time for everybody to go and enjoy, and all the money they raise helps benefit uh, community organizations. Also next weekend, AIDS Outreach Center in Fort Worth will be celebrating their Evening of Hope. That is one of their, that is their biggest fundraiser. So you can uh, go on aoc.org, go online and find out all the information. There'll be a story in next Friday's paper about about the organization, AIDS Outreach Center, and about the event. Uh, that is uh, Reverend Carol West with Celebration Community Church in Fort Worth will be the keynote speaker. She's also going to be receiving an award that night. So she's a fantastic person. Also that same night in Dallas, um, Marvel vs. DC Gay Bingo at S4 for the Resource Center. Um, and the Black Tie Dinner Spring Brunch is May 19th at City View Room and Terrace. You can get all the information in, uh, in the newspaper this week. You can get it online. Look for the Gay Agenda. Look for the Cal Arts and Entertainment Calendar, Best Bets. And look for the scene section to find out what's going on in the bars. You don't want to miss any of the fun. So uh, I guess that's about it for this weekend. Um, I don't have tequila to drink this weekend last, like we did last weekend. with uh, Michael Garza was here and, and our ad rep Nicholas Gonzalez was here to help us uh, taste test some margaritas with Trace Agave's tequila. They're not here and I don't have tequila. So I'm going to go home. And get ready to go to Scarborough Fair myself tomorrow. So remember, if you need tickets, go online. The first person to say, hey, give me tickets to Scarby or something along those lines. I'm going to have a couple of tickets for you, okay? So I'm going to sign off, and I will see you next Friday afternoon. And maybe Israel will be back by then, and he'll be operating the camera so that I'm not you know, cutting people's heads off and stuff like that. And until then, y'all have a great week. Be safe. Bye.